The name of this tutorial is Blender 2.63 B-Mesh Part 2. In Part 1 of my B-Mesh tutorial for Blender 2.63, I showed you how the inability of Blender to create polygonal faces of more than four sides forced Blender to create either extra triangular faces or holes in the mesh. Now that B-Mesh can create faces with any number of edges, the so-called end gods these problems have been eliminated, with the result that meshes have a cleaner topology. I also introduced the Dissolve tool, one of a number of tools that will make your mesh modeling life much simpler. In this video, we'll explore both the problems, using an example of creating a diamond type hole at the top of a mesh, and the B-Mesh alternative in more detail. We'll also look at Dissolve in more depth, and explore some new tools now available in B-Mesh, Vertex Slide, Edge Collapse, and a new Bevel tool that should simplify your mesh modeling life. I'm in a pre-B-Mesh version of Blender. Suppose we want to create a diamond type hole at the top of the cube. Here are the steps we might want to follow. Select the default cube. Tab into Edit Mode. Go to Face Select, Control Tab, Face. Select the top face. Press E to extrude the top face and left click to confirm. Press S to scale the extruded face inwards and left click to confirm. And press the subdivide button. Subdivide created a problem. I'll orbit the view to give you a better look at the top. I'll go into vertex select mode. Remember the fundamental rule. Blender cannot create polygonal faces with more than four edges. Subdivide is the culprit because, by definition, it splits each of the four edges, creating new vertices. That would require the neighboring faces to have five edges instead of four. Since Blender before B-Mesh could not do that, each of the neighboring faces had to be split into three triangular faces. It gets worse if you want a more precise shape for the hole. To do that, we need extra geometry, so we might add more subdivisions. This only creates more triangles. Let's see how B-Mesh handles this. I'm now in Blender 2.63 and I'll do the same steps. Select the default cube, tab into edit mode, go into face select mode, control tab, face, select the top face, press E to extrude the top face and left click to confirm, press S to scale the extruded face inwards and left click to confirm and press the subdivide button. This time there were no extra triangles created. I'll orbit the view as before and go to vertex select mode. Instead of creating all those triangles, each adjacent quadrilateral face to a pentagonal or five-sided face. No extra triangles had to be created. We have much more control over the shape of the hole as I'll show you. Let's look at dissolve in more detail. Dissolve behaves differently depending on what's selected. I'll select the center vertex and click Dissolve. With the center vertex removed, the four faces created by the subdivision are replaced by one face with eight edges, an octagonal face. I'll undo the Dissolve, press the Delete key, and select Vertices. The deleted vertex creates a hole in the cube, which is what you were faced with before B-Mesh. I'll undo the Delete. Here's something interesting. The vertices created by the subdivision are still there. They're available for changing the geometry. A new tool called Vertex Slide lets you do just this by sliding a vertex along its edge. To access this, select a vertex and press Shift V or press Control V and select Vertex Slide. You can drag the vertex along an edge. Left click to confirm the new position. You can create a face with any number of edges by selecting the edges and pressing the F key. In Edge Select Mode, Dissolve works a bit differently. So I'll go to Edge Select Mode, Control Tab Edge, and select an edge. I'll press the Delete key and select Dissolve. The two faces bordering the edge are replaced by one Engon face with no hole. There's another option called Edge Collapse. I'll select an edge press the delete key and select edge collapse. This deletes the edge, collapsing it into a vertex, and then BMEX restructures the remaining faces accounting for the collapse. I'll go to face select and select the face. Then I'll press the delete key and select dissolve. Nothing happens. 
That's because if you're in face select mode and just select one face, that's all that's selected and there's nothing to dissolve. If you select two or more adjoining faces, however, you'll create one big n-gon face out of them. The edges of the cube can be beveled. I'll go into edge select mode, control tab edge, and select the edge loop by selecting one of the edges and right clicking while holding the control key down. Then I'll press the W key for the specials menu and select bevel. This bevel is too large. It's, it's in percentage, so it's at half the length of the cube by default. I'll go to the tool options for bevel and change the percentage to 0.05 to get a smaller bevel and left click to confirm. We get a nice bevel. Recursion, which was there in earlier iterations of bevel, uh, was, didn't make it into 2.63. I'll extrude the face by pressing the E key and moving the face to get the effect of something like a platform shape extended out of the cube. There's still more of B-Mesh to explore, which I'll do in other tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this tour. Happy blendering!